This newly released radio made by Sony might be what you're looking for in a new car stereo. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, 6.9 inch LCD touchscreen monitor. This radio is loaded with a bunch of great features. So stay with us as we review Sony's XAV-AX5600. Hey, what's up? My name is Josh. I'm with Breakers Stereo, and this is a newly released radio and is the replacement for the Sony XAV-AX5500, but with one very important added feature, which is HDMI input. The reason why this is important is because you're able to mirror your phone, whether it's iPhone or Android, without the many restrictions that WebLink has. But we'll get into that a little bit later in this video. For this video, we'll do an overview, an unboxing, go through a full demonstration, and finally, we'll do a pros and cons list along with our overall rating. This radio is a digital multimedia receiver with AM FM tuner and does not play CDs. A 6.95 inch capacitive bezel-less touchscreen, Bluetooth for calling and audio streaming. The smartphone features include wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. As mentioned, WebLink, which gives some additional app access with Android and iPhone. Audio and video features include playback for MP3, WMA, AAC, and FLAC music files. This has a 10-band graphic equalizer, high and low-pass filters, dynamic stage organizer, or DSO, which we'll go over during the demonstration. This is Sirius XM radio, SXV300 tuner required. Also, this will accept a steering wheel control adapter. We have two rear USB ports, the HDMI input, as mentioned, and a rear view camera input. And the pre-out output is five channel, five volt, front, rear, and mono sub. This radio is 20 watts times four RMS or 55 watts times four peak. And a wireless remote is included. This does have a super fast startup time, which will time during the demo and comes with a three year warranty. Now, if you're interested in this radio, it can be purchased on our website. We'll leave a link in the description below and that'll take you directly to the product page. Now, remember we do have financing available, simply add to cart pick a financing option, get approved, and we'll send this out to you ASAP. Okay, let's get into the unboxing. So here we have our warranty, our owner's manual. That's the remote, your harness, and then here's the radio itself. Wow. All right, nice build quality. So your single bin's on the top, and then the button's on the bottom are really nice it looks really good it's an excellent made radio okay and then bluetooth mic steering wheel control plug-in and then you have your mounting screws and there's a strap here tie up your wires i guess you can use that or zip ties on the back of the radio you have two usbs as you mentioned so one is designed for your smartphone. Let's put that to the side. So the blue is for your smartphone. The white is for a USB memory stick, so you can put some music on a flash drive memory stick and then play it back from there. This is the plug for the Sirius XM. That's your main harness. You have the remote, so that's this for the steering wheel. Microphone. You got five channel outputs. So you have front, rear, and a single channel sub. This is your backup input, and then your antenna input. All right, we're testing startup time now. All right, cool. So that was from the initial start. So normally that was the first time we put power to it and it started up pretty quick, so that's awesome. All right, so let's go over some of the features here. So here's our home screen. We have our sources here on the bottom, Radio Series XM, Bluetooth. The HDMI is actually on the back of the screen here. You have your camera, your web link, we'll go over that here in a minute, your second USB port for music, your phone calls, and your settings. So settings, this takes us to this menu. We have general, language, demo. I'm just gonna turn off. You can set the date, you can set the beep to on or off. I'm just gonna set it to off. Rear view camera, normal, or you can do reverse. And then you can also 
set your guidelines as well from here. From here, you can adjust the width of each of these bars, or you can just remove it all together. Okay, you have steering wheel controls, custom or preset. If you hit the custom, then you're able to map out your steering wheel controls from here. Now this is only for analog, all right? So if you're using an adapter, then you're not gonna do it here. You're actually gonna do it on the adapter that you'll be installing. Driving position, factory reset, firmware version. So here you're able to see what firmware version is on your radio. If you have problems, if it gets glitchy, then what you're gonna wanna do is go to Sony's website and look up and see if there's a update for your particular radio. If there is, you can do that through the USB and it's a pretty simple process. Okay, the last thing we have is the open source licenses. All right, so we're back to the settings. We can hit sound here. We have our extra bass, so we can set that to off one or two. So that's basically your bass boost. You have your equalizer and your subwoofer. From here, if you turn it on, you have custom, which you can adjust however you like. And then there are some presets for different types of music. So country, soul, jazz, EDM, dance, hip hop, pop, rock, R&B, and then back to off. All right. And then you also have your subwoofer on or off and then the level control for your subwoofer here. Next, you have balance and fade. That's pretty straightforward. Crossovers. So crossovers, you have your high pass filter, and that's gonna go for your front and rear speakers. And then your low pass filter is for your subwoofer. So on high pass, you have as low as 50 and as high as 120. Low pass, same crossover points, as low as 50, as high as 120. Subwoofer phasing, either normal, or reverse. Okay, so if you're doing subwoofers and you feel like you should get a little more bass, if you change the phasing on it, it changes the phasing for the subwoofers in relation to the interior speakers. And sometimes in the vehicle environment, you will actually get more bass if you put the woofers out of phase. So just kind of go through that and go normal and reverse. It's really not that big of a difference. If you don't notice a difference, then just put it back to normal. Dynamic stage organizer. So what this does is it takes the front speakers and it brings the sound up closer to the middle of the dash. So as you can see, you got a couple settings. You have off, low, and high. So when you're tuning your system, kind of play with this and see if it brings that staging up. And if it does, then use the one that works the best. You have your volume settings. So you have a couple different volume settings that you can set for media, for phone calls, ringtone, voice recognition, and navigation assistance. And the phone call sound, you can set to front, rear, or all. And you can turn on or off the guidance during calling. All right, so that takes care of sound. As far as visual is concerned, you can go into wallpaper. You have a couple of presets here, just different colors, different images, or just black. You can also add, if you like, pictures or photos from your USB device and just hit import here. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to blue. And then we have our dimmer, the dimmer for the monitor and illumination at auto, or we can turn it on or off. Illumination level on monitor. You can adjust from one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that does it for settings. For sources, you have your radio. Here you can tune back and forth. Here are your presets. If you like a station, just hold the button down here and then I'll lock it in. Sirius XM, I don't have the tuner hooked up, but if you have that, you just go there and you're able to control the tuner from there. Bluetooth. So you can go into settings to connect it or disconnect it or reconnect it. Um, HDMI. So HDMI is good for mirroring your iPhone or your Android. And this is handy if you wanna watch video. Whatever's playing on your screen will play on the Sony screen as well. And you're not gonna have the restrictions that you normally have with Weblink. And we'll go over Weblink here in a minute. So that is Netflix, as you guys can see. And if I go into Hulu, we can also watch Hulu as well without any restrictions. Let's go back to home. That'll take you directly to the camera. I don't have a camera hooked up, obviously. And then we have Weblink, okay? So if we go into Weblink app, then you're gonna wanna download that, okay? And once that's downloaded, then you're able to do a couple things here. So for music player, music that is on my iPhone saved. It also do videos that are saved on my iPhone. So whether it is a movie or a music video, I can play it here. All right, also YouTube. So I'm able to play back YouTube as well. Now, if I go into casting, it takes a second in order for it to calibrate up. Okay, so it took a little time in order for this to happen. 
Well, that's why it was really key that Sony added the HDMI input because if you try to mirror your phone beyond YouTube and beyond your music videos or the videos are stored into your phone, it is really tough to do. I wanna show you guys this. You go into Netflix and you try to play Netflix. It played the preview, it's not playing the actual video. So you're gonna run into restriction issues when it comes to webcast, I don't know why. But okay, so just so you know, um, that is how that works. All right, so let's get out of there real quick. We'll go into phone, and here you're able to pair your phone, go through your phone book, uh, dial out if you want to. Okay, so let's go over Apple CarPlay. Here are your applications. You have a few pages, depending on which ones will transfer over. Obviously, not all your apps are going to transfer over, so you're not gonna be able to play Angry Birds or whatever the kids are playing nowadays on their apps. Uh, but you do have your important ones here. So you have your Apple Maps, you have Google Maps, and then you also have Waze. For music, um, you got a bunch here. So you have your Apple Music, all right? And then from here, you're able to control everything so you can go browse you can uh, do the radio go to your library uh, you also have amazon music same thing you're able to control your amazon music from there um, you have pandora your stations will populate here iHeartRadio, spotify as well so all controllable from the face of the radio and this also does sirius xm so if you have a sirius xm subscription you can just download the app and then listen to your music from here. Now you don't necessarily need to buy the tuner, but obviously if you're streaming it from your phone, it will require you to use some of your data. Okay, um, also text messages are accessible here. And it'll actually read off your text messages as well. 22395, said your bike's verification code. And then you can reply you as well. So that's a really cool feature. So if you do happen to get a text message while you're driving around, you can uh, retrieve it. I wouldn't say read it, you can retrieve it and respond to it. So that's definitely a great feature. So Apple CarPlay has been around for a while. So most of you guys have experienced Apple CarPlay. I just wanted to do a brief summary as to what it does and what it's able to do. If you're not so familiar with it, this will give you just a brief overview. Okay, so let's check out Android Auto next. When you launch Android Auto, it automatically goes into Google Maps. If you wanna to go to the homepage, touch that button there, and that takes you to the applications that are applicable and then um, opposed to Apple CarPlay that you scroll uh, to the side, this is gonna scroll up. You have mapping, you have messaging, you have Waze, and then any music apps that you would have populate on here as well. So very similar to Apple CarPlay, just in the Android format. Okay, pros and cons, starting with the pros. Excellent build quality. The buttons and the overall feel are really nice. Five volt pre-outs fast startup time, three-year warranty, and the HDMI input, which is a great feature that they added over last year's model. Okay, now the cons. Now a little thin on the audio controls, I would like to see adjustable slopes on the crossover, and it's missing time alignment, but it does have the dynamic stage organizer to make up for it, but I believe the time alignment is done properly, the results are better for staging. No wireless features, but it's not priced in that category. Normally to get wireless, you have to spend at least a couple hundred dollars more. Excellent unit, great features, and a good name brand you can trust. We're gonna give this radio four and a quarter stars. It's a great value and a good stereo to build a system upon, especially because of the five volts. Now again, if you'd like to purchase this radio, just click the link in the description below that'll take you directly to the product page. Again, my name is Josh, I'm with Breakers Stereo. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.